Hello everyone, my name is Christina and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you what you should be doing if you're in college and you want to apply for medicine, how you can apply to your strengths, how to get work experience, ways to stand out and how to increase your chances of getting into medicine if you're from a disadvantaged background. So the number one thing I want you guys to take away is that you need to do your research. If you know the ins and outs of the admission process then you're highly likely to be a successful candidate and get into medical school. You need to know what universities you meet the entry requirements for. I'll talk about this more a bit later. You need to have a good idea of the NHS and the healthcare system in the UK. So you need to know about CCGs, you need to know the founding principles of the NHS, you need to know who founded the NHS, what year, just general things like that. You need to know the background of the NHS and the healthcare system in the UK. It's a really good idea to stay up to date with medical news as well. The Medic Portal has this really great thing where you can sign up to a newsletter and each week they send you, I think, three of the most important bits of medical news each week so definitely sign up to that. In that interview they probably will quiz you on all the different things that have happened in the news recently so you know during my time that was kind of like the junior doctor um the new junior doctor contract so there was massive strikes about that so i was asked about that in my interview they also asked me about the bauer garber case as well as the charlie guard case so, so it's a really good idea to stay up to date with all the news so i highly recommend signing up to that newsletter i did and it's one of the things that i think made a massive difference in my application it goes without saying but when your interviews come around you need to practice 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 I'm going to do a whole video on the interview process so stay tuned for that but definitely make sure have it in the back of your mind that when I think December to March time comes around of year 13 you're going to need to practice a lot of MMI questions to make sure that you know everything on your interview day. You don't necessarily need to do any courses or buy any books but if that makes you feel comfortable then go ahead. There are lots and lots of questions online and on YouTube that can help you um, so I just recommend using that but if you do feel like you need a course then go ahead. Make use of the student room. The student room will be a massive resource for you and is full of just such useful information, especially for medics. This is where you'll find out what previous applicants, previous medical applicants are saying about the interview process, the general admissions process. And this is where you'll find out what successful applicants have in common, which I'm going to get onto a bit later. So moving on to applying to your strengths. This is probably the number one thing and it's so, so important. If you want to know the secret of getting into medical school, it's literally that you need to apply to your strength. I can't stress this enough. This is honestly where most people fall down and I really want to make sure you guys don't make this mistake. Different medical schools have different entry requirements. So one university might say that they want applicants to have really high GCSEs and then another university might say that they're not too fussed about GCSEs but they want you to have a high BMAT score. Now, if you've got a really good set of GCSEs but not a great BMAT score, it sounds like common sense but you would obviously apply to the first option, wouldn't you? The thing is, not many people take this into account. Not many people do their research. They don't check the entry requirements and they don't check the student room. Universities don't always stay what the entry requirements are. So for example, if you go onto the Cambridge website for medicine, I think the GCSE requirement is, I think they just asked you to pass maths and English, but obviously if you come, if you apply to Cambridge with a C in maths and English, your chances of getting an interview for medicine are quite low. If you look at the student room, however, you'll realize that a lot of the medical applicants for Cambridge have pretty much all A stars, minimum like six, seven, eight A stars. So this is why the student room is going to be so important because you'll see what successful applicants have in common. You can also have a look at applicants that got rejected and have a look at their stats, see what they had in common. Did all the people who got rejected have really low UK CAT scores? Did they have really, um, you know, did they have below average GCSEs? Have a look what the people who got rejected, um, what they have in common, because that will give you some clues as to what the university doesn't necessarily have as their entry requirements, but it is something that they look at. So I also have this thing called the three to one rule. This isn't like um, a, like a proper rule or anything, but essentially I personally recommend applying to three universities that you meet the entry requirements for. You've done your research. You know that you've got a high chance of getting in using your stats. You, um, you've used the student room. You've done your research and you know that you're going to get an interview and then apply to one other university. This could be maybe your dream university, maybe Oxbridge or something, a university that you're not quite sure if you will get an interview. Maybe you don't meet the entry requirements or maybe it's quite a risky option. That way, out of your four medical options, you've got three that are quite safe and you meet the entry requirements for, you'll probably get an interview and then you've only got one which is a bit more risky. Now, obviously, if you've got a situation where your dream uni, you actually meet the entry requirements for and you've done your research, you probably will get in and that's amazing. That means 
all four of your options are really, really safe and you'll probably get an interview at all of them, maybe even get offers, that's amazing. But if you're someone who has your eye on a university, maybe, I don't know, Birmingham. Birmingham, by the way, if you didn't already know, they're notorious for choosing applicants with lots of A stars. So say you only had five A stars at GCSE or five eights and nines, um, Birmingham wouldn't be the best choice, but if you've got three other options, maybe St. George's, Newcastle, Sheffield, other unis that don't look at your GCSEs as much, as long as you meet the entry requirements in other areas, then Birmingham is a relatively okay choice because you have three other safe options. I hope this all makes sense, but basically, and what, what I'm trying to say here is you need to manage risk. Applying to medical school is risky because the competition rates are so high, but if you apply it to your strengths, if you meet the entry requirements, your chances of getting in are so much higher. Make sure to check out my video on how to choose a medical school, it'll, it'll be right here. And I go into detail on the three main things that you need to take into account when choosing a medical school. So the next one is start early. Now, yes, it's common sense, but most people don't do this. When it comes to your personal statement, I recommend starting as early as, you know, late year 12, maybe even after your mock exams. I also recommend looking for work experience as early as day one of year 12, literally. First day of sixth form, first day of college, I recommend looking for work experience. The earlier you start, the more time you have to get work experience. If you leave it till halfway through year 12, you might think, oh, I've got six months before I have to start my personal statement, but six months isn't that long. Sometimes it takes months for your work experience application just to be processed. So the earlier you can start, the better. Honestly, don't take, don't take this one for granted. Please, please, please start early. I also recommend starting your UCAP prep, definitely four to five weeks early. I also recommend writing a list of all your hobbies, extracurricular activities, all the things you've done to learn about medicine, all the trips you've been on, just anything that you think would be interesting to medical schools. Um, so things like, you know, I played netball for five years or I went on a trip to Morocco or you volunteered with the elderly. Start making a list of all those things and maybe even write a note of what you learned from those things as well. So when it comes to writing your personal statement, it will just be so easy. All you have to do is piece those things together and fill in the gaps. A lot of people, when it comes to, you know, year 13 or year 12, whenever they start writing their personal statement, it's so difficult because they have to trace back in their head all the things that they've done. So if you've made a list of this already, it'll just make life so much easier. And moving on to work experience, medical schools do require you to have work experience. However, they know that it is quite difficult to get. If you don't have family members who are doctors or healthcare professionals, that is probably the easiest way, but if you don't have that, you can apply online, you can reach out via email and ringing up GPs, ringing up um, you know, hospices and stuff like that. So moving on to extracurricular activities. So as a medical applicant, it's absolutely essential that you have some form of extracurricular activities. Basically, medical schools want to know that not only can you get really good grades, but also you can have a hobby on the side, and they want to know that you're a well-rounded applicant. This just means that you're not just incredibly clever and you just don't have a social life. So you do have some form of a hobby or something that you do regularly. You have just, you know, trips that you've been on. You're not just incredibly smart, but you also have other things going on. That's what they want to know with your extracurricular activities. Most applicants will have some form of work experience, some form of volunteering, as well as having read a book or two that's medically related and having a sport or instrument that they play regularly. Because all medical applicants are really, really clever, the best way to stand out and make your application stand out is to have extracurricular activities that go above and beyond. So I'm gonna give you a list of examples of things that you can do to make your application stand out. Number one, summer schools. I've got a whole entire blog post written about all the different summer schools in the UK, so I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Especially if you're from a disadvantaged background, so if you've got a low income, a single parent, first in your family to go to university, if you live in a um, deprived area, anything like that, definitely check out that blog post because most of the summer schools that I've mentioned are specifically for you guys. They're made to increase access of students like you guys who want to study medicine but might not be able to with given your circumstances. So those summer schools will give you things like um, a guaranteed interview or a lower offer. So definitely worth checking out because it might increase your chances of getting into medicine. So summer schools are essentially a week where you get to spend life like a medical student. You'll go to lectures, you'll go to anatomy, you might have clinical skill sessions, you'll get to just live life like a medical student and see what it's actually like. 
Summer schools for me were a great opportunity to see whether medicine was right for me and how I'd cope with university life. So um, I definitely found that, you know, the workload was quite a lot, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I knew that once I'd done my summer school, I thought, yeah, definitely medicine is right for me. So I highly recommend that you guys do them. They are so much fun. They're not just work, work, work. They give you evening activities so that you've got stuff to do on the night and you meet lots of nice people as well. So I highly recommend that you guys check out that blog post. The next best thing to summer schools is discovery days. So these are essentially just pretty much summer schools, but crammed into one day. So you'll spend a day in the life of a medical student. Again, you'll do lectures, you might have anatomy, stuff like that. And I actually went on a discovery day where we had a question and answer session with some medical students and they were able to answer some of our questions, which was really helpful. So yeah, highly recommend discovery days as well. Conferences are a great thing to do as well. Um, not many people do them, so it's a great way to stand out. And basically, if you're looking for a conference that's medically related, I recommend signing up to Eventbrite, which pretty much is um, it's an app or a website that just shows um, talks and events happening in your area. The next one is national level of achievement. Now, I know not everyone will have this, but if you have some form of award or achievement that you've got that's kind of like a really big level or really high standard that's a great thing to use um, if you want to stand out because not many people will have that campaigns projects and petitions so if you read my blog post on how i got into newcastle medical school then you'll know that i had a petition taken to parliament with the, with the help of my mp and obviously this is this isn't something that everyone has done so it obviously stands out and it shows that you know all of these all of these extracurricular activities just show that you've got different skills and qualities that medical schools want in their medical students and that they want in doctors. With the petition that I took to parliament, it shows that I have initiative, leadership, and it just shows that I've got commitment as well. If you've taken part in a campaign or project or petition that was, you know, not necessarily taken to parliament or anything big, but if you've taken part in one, it's something to mention because it shows you've got teamwork, it shows that you're innovative, it's just, it just shows a lot about you. It's definitely worth mentioning in your personal statement or interview. Artistic, so not many medical students are very artistic, or creative a lot of us are like very academic and very just kind of words and books orientated so if you're quite artistic or creative maybe you've got an Etsy shop maybe you just like drawing or creating in your spare time then this is um, a great hobby to mention but it shows you've got another side to you rather than just only being like really really clever and only being like really really smart so that's a good thing to mention as well Online courses, so not many not many people do this. I feel like I'm the only one that's done an online course on like medicine stuff, but when I was applying, I thought there was a point where I wouldn't be able to get work experience. So I thought, what's the next best thing? And so I found a website called Future Learn, which is a great website where they have lots of different online courses for a range of different things. One of them, uh, one of their main topics is medicine and healthcare. So they have a range of different topics where they talk about different things in medicine and healthcare. If you're not able to get work experience, then this is definitely something to look at. You definitely learn a lot about the world of medicine and it shows that you've got initiative as well. Expeditions abroad, so this is becoming more and more popular. I think more and more people are doing things like World Challenge and stuff like that. If you've gone abroad to help people in less developed countries, then that obviously shows that you're empathetic and you're caring, you've got compassion and stuff like that. So that does make you stand out because you've got qualities that we're really looking for in medical students and doctors. And the last one is language. So if you speak another language, for example, BSL or French, Arabic, anything like that, that is definitely, that will definitely make you stand out. Not many people speak a different language and it's something that we need in the NHS. So that would definitely be something really, really good to mention in your personal statement or interview. Widening participation. So if you're from a disadvantaged background, so if you have a low income, you, are, you have a single parent, you're from a deprived area, you're first in your family to go to university, anything like that, um, universities have lots of different schemes to try and help you guys come to university and they might even help you along the way so they might give you a guaranteed interview so that means you don't have to worry about getting an interview for medicine or they might give you um, a lower offer so instead of three A's they might give you ABB or AAB so definitely do your research and find out if there's any universities that you want to go to what kind of things that they're offering most if not all universities have, have some form of 
planning participation scheme. So I'm sure that there'll be something out there for the universities that you want to go to. Also, if you're studying um, non-science A-levels or if you're doing, um, or if you don't quite think that you'll get three A's, then definitely uh, do some research into foundation courses. So, so this is actually a six year program where instead of five years, you get an extra year to kind of adjust and um, get used to kind of the style of teaching in medicine. But you just graduate as a normal doctor, just like everyone else. They just give you kind of a year to help ease you into it and yeah, get used to things. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of these tips, if you're going to do any of them, if you plan to do any of them. Let me know in the comments what type of videos you guys want to see. I've got loads of ideas planned, but I want to know what you guys want to see as well. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye!